What's going on YouTube? Got another knife review here for you. Today we're going to be looking at the Les Voorhees. This is the custom Model 10 uh, XL version. Um, you know, Les's knives in general are, are usually a little bit on, on the smaller side um, from what I've seen or experienced. Um, the Model 10 in particular is usually a 3 to sub 3 inch blade. And so um, his larger XL version, you know, is just the same design, uh, except for obviously just a uh, modified larger blade and larger handle to accommodate that blade. Um, this one is a knife I actually got off of John Wayne Colt 45, maybe a name you haven't heard on YouTube in a while. And uh, as he was kind of transitioning out of uh, tactical folding knives um, I was able to snatch this one from him and uh, he had some work done to it he had uh, carbon fiber scales um, made for this knife as well as this um, milled clip um, from the original but he included all the original um, scales and and whatnot this also had like titanium um, a mid scale here and then here you have the a green kind of carbon fiber, uh, not really shredded, but um, this this green carbon fiber pattern uh, on this scale, which is at first I thought it was a little wanky, but now you know after I installed it um, against these Damascus bolsters, I just I don't know, it's just really unique, and I've kind of kept it like this. Um, Les Voorhees is a custom maker, I believe, out of Minnesota. Um, and my first uh, Voorhees was my Abrams uh, V2, which I, I thought was just an awesome knife. Um, I love that knife. Uh, has so much um, detailed work on the titanium. Um, but I ended up trading it for um, another Voorhees knife that I'll be showing uh, or I'll be doing a video on later. Um, but right here, this uh, Faisal Yamin. Uh, supernova um, but just absolutely phenomenal knife but getting back into the 10 um, you know when I saw this knife I was like man it's so it's so streamlined the handle kind of a banana shape knife if you will not quite straight like a Sebenza um, you know the handles are different but you know with that curve you know really um, it just really just sits in your hand so comfortably there's no jimping on this knife uh, to speak of but um, man it's just super comfortable um, the bolster or the scale obviously is, is incredibly smooth it's this polished uh, material and then you do have a little bit of texture on these bolsters but um, I don't that's just more the Damascus um, characteristics rather than you know what it was actually made for um, here you have a crazy crazy thin hollow grind. Uh, this is one of the thinnest edges um, that of my collection um, and it just makes for an incredibly incredibly sharp edge. Um, one of the sharpest knives in my collection um, and I have sharpened this one as well on the wicked edge so it just made it even sharper. Um, you see those vertical grind lines? Um, it's not polished out, not hand rubbed or anything. I just think it really looks great um, contrasting on that hollow grind. And then you do have that satin finish on the flats here. Um, this is Les's old mark. Um, his old logo. Um, nowadays he's moved on to uh, either this logo, which I think is kind of his second generation logo. I don't know if that's coming out uh, in the light or not. There you go. A little bit better there. Um, and then he's also got a new logo on my other Voorhees. This is my Simplex, which is also a Faisal Yamin design, that little LV uh, in the square. So I'm pretty sure that's the, the most recent iteration of his, his logos. I actually kind of like this one the most because it's the least obtrusive. Um, but anyway... Uh, this one is featuring, I believe, CPM uh, 154 steel. Uh, you've got the titanium liners. This is, also has a Damascus um, backspacer, geared backspacer um, back there. So 
just a lot of contrast going on uh, on this knife. Single thumb stud, smooth thumb stud, so it's not the smoothest or best feeling one, um, but it does work well. Uh, it does run on IKBS, not on the bearings that a lot of his new knives are using. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, I love IKBS. I actually like it more than regular bearings. Uh, I don't think it's that hard to take apart either. Um, I know a lot of people complain. I mean, unless you're prying it open and like letting it spill all over the place. Um, I mean, when you take your knives apart, just take them, <laughs> take them apart gently, you know, and um, usually they're covered with grease, so they're not going to shoot all over the place, but, you know, line your workspace with some towels and they'll catch your, you know, your ball bearings just fine in there. Um, this is a three and a half inch blade, um, measuring up and, you know, something that was, you know, that really stood out to me as well about this knife design. Um, you know, that blade style, it's, I mean, a little reminiscent of like almost like a Japanese cleaver or um, kind of like a Santo Santoku knife a, a little bit, um, which also kind of turned me onto the knife. And the way that the blade seats within the handle, um, even though it's, you know, wider, I don't know, for whatever reason, just the way that it, um, the way that it sat, I just thought was really, really cool. Sometimes I don't like knives when the blade sits out so much, but... For this one, I just felt like it really worked. Um, and especially when you open it up, then it becomes a streamlined banana, which um, which for me was, was just really cool. Um, you know, some knives like the Encingo, it was a little bit reminiscent of that. Not quite, they're, they're all like poor representations, but um, yeah, for whatever reason, I mean, the Encingo is one of my favorite blade styles. Um, the uh, kind of reverse Tonto-ish blade on the uh, Richard Rogers tangent also kind of just it reminded me a little bit of that so um, but overall man I, I just I can't speak highly enough of of Les Voorhees and his work um, I absolutely love his work uh, every time he puts up a sign up sale I'm always I'm always on it unless it's you know a particular style that I don't like but no matter if it's his model 10 or 11 or 12 or 15 or 9 um, I, I love them all <laughs> to be honest and um, so yeah I mean not much else to say uh, just an absolutely fantastic knife I'm so glad that I was able to get one of the few uh, XL versions that are out there um, there's not many out there so um, the regular smaller one the three inch one might be a little bit small for my particular liking but um, yeah, if you get a chance to snag an XL, it's just an awesome, awesome knife. So, um, yeah, and something that you see a lot on Les's knives, you know, is just, you know, whether it's a scale or whether it's an onlay or whether it's these multiple scales and kind of uh, faux bolsters or whatever, um, I think it's just really cool, you know, the, the design that Les um, puts out there. I think he's very intuitive, um, uses a lot of exotic materials as well um, and his knives every single knife that I've handled is just incredibly smooth I mean you see that on the model 10 the supernova just flips out one of my best flippers um, just falls down so easily and then the simplex is the same way um, just one of the easiest flippers out there um, and detent is perfect like it doesn't it doesn't fly out you know it's it's perfect so um, yeah, I love Les Voorhees work. Uh, I, I can't wait to get more if I get a chance. Um, one of my favorite designs is the, uh, Tashi Baruka, or Brucha, I can't remember how to pronounce his name, but his Jetstream, uh, with, with, uh, Les was one of my grail knives for sure. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for the Model 10 XL. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next vid. Take care. Bye.